Hello, my name is Gregory Gerard, and I did my project on the psychology of place kickers in college football. Here's my outline of my PowerPoint project. Um, <clears throat> we're going to go through and look at uh, intro to place kicking, describing what kicking actually is and the rules. Uh, then going through, we're going to go look at the psychology behind the kicker and what goes through a kicker's mind when the play is happening and prior to performance. Uh, then we're going to go uh, change directions to the mental side of things and uh, define choking and look at examples of kickers who've choked in famous games such as the Super Bowl. Um, then we're going to look at uh, anxiety and how it affects performance and we're going to look at a couple of anxiety and arousal theories and we're going to finish up with ways to improve performance through self-talk and mental imagery and then the conclusion. Uh, and I found this um, this uh, chart right here online. Uh, it goes through and looks at uh, the nine or the three levels of uh, skills that go through a uh, athlete's um, thought process, if kinda, um, and the mental side of things that goes through it such as attitude, motivation, goals, and commitment, and people skills. Those are the basic skills in level one. <clears throat> then level two, as you can see, it says mental imagery and self-talk, and those are pre preparatory skills. And then you have the performance skills in level three, which are managing anxiety, managing emotions, and concentration. So here's a little introduction about uh, place kicking. At Kicking has become more and more important in the game of football, and as the importance of kicking has increased, so has the amount of pressure, situations, and choking in those certain situations. But, um, as you can see, uh, in football, an extra point equals one point, and that's after a touchdown is scored. A field goal can be attempted, uh, usually either at the end of a quarter, or end of a half, or the game, or when a team unsuccessfully gets uh, a first down within the first three downs inside usually the 43-ish yard line. So uh, field goal equals three points. Uh, in the NFL, the uh, NFL record is 64 yards, but usually in college it's about 50 uh, yards and in and as close as 18 yards when a team cannot get a touchdown from the one yard. <clears throat> uh, and special teams, uh, as you can see from this picture right here, you have a holder who's going to snap, or a uh, center or long snapper, usually it's a long snapper, is going to snap the ball to the holder and the holder is going to hold the ball for the kicker to kick. All right, so you have another picture displaying what exactly happens. Uh, and most kickers, I read that, like this picture says, set up slightly right of center. Uh, the holder does, and as well as the right of the goalposts. As you can see, the goalpost is in uh, slightly to the left of where the ball is being snapped. This is an extra point in the NFL, which is from 33 yards away. Uh, so a touchdown is scored, and an extra point is attempted from 33 yards in the NFL. Uh, it's only 18 or uh, 19 yards in college. A uh, team can elect to kick a PAT, which is a point after touchdown, or they can elect to go for two points, which is a two-point conversion. All right, so here's the first <clears throat> major mental um, scenario that I came across. <clears throat> and it's known as, excuse me, it's known as icing a kicker. Uh, over the years, icing a kicker works just as often as not working at all. Um, ultimately, it results in 50-50 odds of working at the, co at the college level. Uh, kickers have different ways of going about being iced, 
some do not think about the ice happening at all and just when it happens they they just think or hopefully uh, mentally imagine the scenario the kick or scenario in their head um but um uh some other kickers also uh focus on the ice uh expect the ice to actually happen which i thought was quite surprising uh i wouldn't advise that as a kicking coach but some expect the ice to happen and when it does they're ready for it and then go out there and attempt their kick but uh, uh icing the kicker is opposing team when an opposing coach calls a timeout prior to the field goal attempt and makes them think about it longer uh, kickers have adapted to this idea like i said and in college, it's a 50-50 odds of uh, the ice working. And uh, and I have a YouTube video here that um, shows the only real uh, scenario I could find was actually in a video game, where you can see in this picture here that it's actually adapted to video games, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, in this NCAA video game, it's harder for the kicker uh, well, the player to attempt a field goal, and the the meter where the, the actual uh, meter for the player to use is iced over as well, which I thought was really interesting. But here's a quick one minute YouTube video. This thing will load. If not, we'll just forget about it. Okay, well, we'll just forget about it since it's not working. It wasn't too big of an issue anyway. <clears throat> uh, so the next um, mental aspect I looked at was choking, which it, choking is an attentional problem. Uh, it displays a breakdown of automatic repeti repetitive actions and choking is characterized by performing exhibiting performers exhibiting conscious step-by-step -step execution of skills and a breakdown of automated movement patterns. Uh, when a player chokes it ultimately leads to weakened routine step-by-step -step movements. Um, obviously experience, whoop, how the YouTube video is going to try and load on my computer. <laughs> there we go. All right. So, uh, obviously experience can help with choking and it can limit choking from happening. But in case of these, uh, unexperienced players, uh, uh, you can help limit choking by uh, playing out imaginary or me having mental imagery in your head prior to performance, such as uh, making a 50-yard field goal to win the national championship, for example. But the more vivid the, the uh, imagery is, the more likely of a chance that that event will occur and you will be successful in that event as I will explain later in my PowerPoint as well. Alright, here's a uh, uh, talking about anxiety. I found this really interesting uh, chart here that is actually also in our slideshow but this one's a little different. It, it looks more at arousal rather than um, uh, state anxiety like in the book or like in the slideshow. But obviously, it depends on the athlete in most cases, in my opinion. These are uh, uh, an athlete's IZOF, which is the individual zones of optimal functioning. Uh, levels vary. So here we look at the chart. You have athlete 1, athlete 2, and athlete 3. So in some cases, like in athlete 3, the higher the arousal, the better the performance. And then like in athlete 1, the lower the arousal, arousal, 
the lower the performance. And you have athlete two who's somewhere in the middle, which I would explain as myself. Um, it really just depends on the athlete, like I said. Uh, but the athlete must just <clears throat> must determine what state anxiety level produces their best performance. Uh, you have a low moderate, low IZOF athlete, moderate IZOF athlete, or a high OZF, OZ, IZOF athlete. <clears throat> One's an anxiety theory and one's an arousal theory. Now, the drive theory uh, is the one I look more at, honestly, but uh, both are both theories, so neither are proven yet. But the drive th theory explains or says that with increased anxiety means increased performance. Uh, the presence of others improves performance on well-learned skills and when others are not present or when others are present during unlearned skills then the performance decreases which i think is exactly true so if you're if an athlete is um has practiced the skills the skills are going to go up or the performance is going to go up and when they haven't practiced the skills they obviously are not going to perform well when people are watching and then the reversal uh, theory it, it says arousal affects performance depending on an individual's interpretation of his or her arousal level. Um, so when pleasant arousal increases, performance increases, which I I agree to an extent, but um, I don't know. I just I think this one's a little little out there in my opinion. Uh, Self-talk is a good practice uh, for to prepare for a in this instance uh, a kick for a, a place kicker in football. Uh, Self-talk is any statement or thought about self prior to performance, usually prior to performance. Appropriate self-talk keeps focus on the present and task. Uh, it keeps mind from it keeps the mind from wandering. Appropriate self-talk helps one focus on the present and keeps one's mind from wandering. So, ultimate limits the possibility of choking. And we're going to look next at positive self-talk in particular. Uh, positive or motivational self-talk. Uh, you have uh, psych up, confidence, instruction, and anxiety control. These are all different types of positive self-talk or different examples. Of positive self-talk and uh, six ways you can improve your self-talk is keep internal phrases short use the first person create a positive <coughs> excuse me create positive phrases prior to performance say phrases with meaning speak nicely inside own in your own head and repeat these phrases uh, and thought stopping is a interesting um, method as well. Thought stopping, you have to identify your negative thoughts that are in your head and stop those thoughts. You, uh, the athlete must learn how to do these, usually in most cases through positive self-talk. Positive self-talk can help the athlete um, think less negative thoughts and more positive thoughts, ultimately improving performance. Uh, mental imagery, like I said before, um, is a good task to learn. Uh, visual detailed images in your head. <clears throat> uh, the more detailed the image, the more positive performance results. Uh, use each sense in your visual sense, uh, feeling, hearing, even smell and taste in some cases. Uh, the more vivid and detailed the image in your head is prior to performance, the better chances of those performances being successful. All right, and here's my conclusion of, of ways to improve performance for college kickers. Uh, control your anxiety prior to the kick. Uh, identify what IZOF level produces the best performance in your kicker. Uh, practice positive self-talk and mental imagery tactics. <clears throat>